This is Twit. So we got a new feature last week in Android's Messenger app. It's just been enhanced to offer its users what they call verified SMS. That's with a capital V, so I think that's the official name. Uh, and at this point, okay, so it's kind of a cool feature if a company wants to conduct business over SMS, which pretty much everyone know now knows is just as much spam as it is real. So Google said, okay, we're going to offer SMS verification. And at this point, the list of supporting companies, because it's something that companies have to sign up for with Google, is rather short. Uh, 1-800-Flowers, Banco Bradesco, Kayak, Payback, and Sophie. That's it. <laughs> with any luck, the service will grow in, in time. But th their explanation was very light on details, but there was just enough for me to sort of read through the watered down explanation and, and figure out what must be going on. So Google has effectively implemented a, an entirely separate authentication layer separate from SMS messages, which are just SMS messages. So they're, you know, they go through the regular SMS system. They, they're limited in size and they're not encrypted. What Google wanted to do was to arrange to authenticate them, to add an, a separate authentication layer. Um, so to do that, both ends of the SMS message connection also need to have data connections, that is internet connections, back to Google for the exchange of metadata. Um, companies must, as I noted, register with Google and securely establish their identities. In, the, in Google's coverage of this, that's all they said. Who, we don't know how that's done. You know, probably the way certificate authorities verify people. Maybe, you know, it's, it's never been very robust. It's, you know, call you at the number that's, that D&B has you registered as or something. But somehow the, the point is, Google is convinced that you are, you the company, are who you are claiming to be. Um, in, at which time that the company generates a, a, uh, a, a public private key pair and provides their public key to Google for Google's redistribution of that company's public key. Then also each instance of Android's messenger also generates a similar public private key pair and provides their public key to Google. Now that might be done ahead of time. That might be done on the fly. Either way would work. And again, Google was very scant on facts here. So when a company wants to send a verified by Google SMS message, they obtain the recipient's public key from Google. Okay, so I guess I answered my question. That 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 does presume that 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 the each Android device has pre-registered, uh, the Android Messenger has pre-registered itself uh, and its public key with Google, so that the the company wanting to send a verified message can get their public key. They use so the company takes their private key and their recipient's public key and uses some key agreement protocol, such as Diffie-Hellman uh, key agreement, uh, DHKA, which will allow them to, to synthesize what will end up being a shared secret key. This key is used as the key for an HMAC through which they run the SMS message. So basically, they create a message authentication code, a MAC, of the message using the shared key, which they derive from their private key and the recipient's public key. They send that HMAC back to Google and send the SMS message directly to the Android user over the standard SMS channel. When the Android user receives the SMS, 
claiming to be from the company, they have the company's apparent phone number. That is the originator of the message. So Messenger asks Google for the private key matching that phone number. After Google returns that to the Messenger app, just as happened on, on the sending end, the Android client uses its private key and the obtained public key um, with the same key agreement, so, such as Diffie-Hellman. This, thanks to the magic of Diffie-Hellman key agreement, will yield the same key that the sender obtained. So the recipient uses that to key the HMAC, runs the received SMS message through that, sends the message's HMAC back to Google, and if the two Macs match, the one from the sender and the one that's been received back from the recipient, from, from the recipient Google then sends back a flag that turns on verified sender notification along with a bunch of other information about the company to, to allow you to do a little bit of digging into who this verified sender is. So that's what, you know, that's what they've done. They basically, they added an entirely separate authentication mechanism to SMS. And as I was thinking about this, it sure seemed like a lot of work to go through but it does allow senders to send SMS messages to Android, to any Android recipients in a way that authenticates them as the sending company and also absolutely prevents any tampering with the unencrypted SMS message while it's en route. So no man in the middle can get it. It, you can't spoof being the authenticated company. You can't change the message in any way or the Max won't match. And I did notice that U.S. law enforcement would have no complaint about this. Since the system never encrypts the communications, it's only providing robust authentication of the sender and preventing any tampering. So in Google's coverage of this, they wrote... As part of this feature, Google attempts to verify all messages that appear to be sent by a business that is registered with verified SMS. If the authenticity codes don't match and Google can't verify the message, the messages app displays, quote, message could not be verified. Because verify requires a data connection, if you have a weak data connection, the messages app may display verifying sender dot, 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 presumably like waiting to get enough data or a, a robust enough connection to, to actually perform the verification. And Google said if you have no data connection, the messages app displays waiting for connection to verify sender. And they said until the sender of a message has been verified, Google doesn't recommend replying with sensitive info or opening links that you aren't sure you trust. So anyway, as I said, I, I sort of wanted to cover it because I thought it was interesting from a cryptographic standpoint. You know, they're they're creating something new that we've never had before. You know, we, we certainly have secure, encrypted, authenticated messaging out of the SMS band. This doesn't encrypt SMS. It just adds uh, using metadata it adds an authentication layer to it which you know is another new feature for for the internet and for for google's messaging android users which i thought was sort of interesting 